Good morning. Thank you for being here on this rainy first Sunday of Advent. Uh, we begin the church year today. Uh, we turn the clocks uh, in our own way and begin again the story of Jesus coming uh, and come to the season of expectation and hope and joy as we look ahead to Christmas. This is our special season. Uh, like you can see we're decorated today and we'll be getting ready for our lessons and carol service tonight at 5 p.m. here with our choir, the Episcopal Church of Yale Choir and the Mark Mount Chapel Choir. But we're especially blessed today to have Gabby Pritchard Wilkes here, uh, Reverend Doctor, Pastor, Leader, Speaker, Scholar, Leader, everything you can imagine. Jenny will give a fuller introduction before she preaches, but it is a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for coming, coming out from the city. Uh, so it's a special day, uh, even with this rainy weather, and so we invite you to participate as you feel called and comfortable, but especially to get into that mindset of hope and expectation, even as we face hard times in the world and tough news, this is still a season when we are thinking ahead to what God is doing. Now we invite you. I invite you to stand if you are able. Join me in the call to worship. Come, O oh come, Emmanuel. Come and fill our hearts anew. We grow weary in our waiting. Still we try to keep waiting. We look for you, your life, your light. And on that holy silent night. Come and grace us with your spirit. You may find the welcome here. And we begin with that great Advent hymn, Come, Thou Long Expected Jesus. Advent candlelighting. 
You may, you may remain seated as we sing the response when they light the candle. Thank you, Supremus. In the days of exile and uncertainty, the prophet Isaiah cried out, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down, and the mountains trembled before you. As he approached his own time of uncertainty, Jesus urged his disciples, saying, Therefore, keep away, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. We wait as people surprised again and again by God, who shakes us out of our complacency and wakes us up to the work of the kingdom all around us. We light this candle as a sign of our shocking hope. Might we stay awake to God activity in the world as we wait in a spec station that even now God is with us. Amen. And then we'll sing Wait to the Lord. There we go. <laughs> Mac will lead us. prophet Isaiah. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice, and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Among themselves. 
Restore us, O God of hosts, let your face shine on the face of the But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you make strong before yourself. Then we'll never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O God of hosts, let your face shine that we may be saved. to be with us this morning and for you all to get to hear a good word from her today. Uh, I got to know Gabby and she's become a good friend and colleague because we both went to Yale Divinity School together uh, a number of years ago. Uh, Gabby is the founding co-lead pastor of the Double Love Experience with her husband Andrew down in Brooklyn. It's a fantastic ch church that also has a big YouTube presence, so I know there are some folks here that also tune in there um, and encourage you to do both. They have a fantastic uh, music ministry, and Gabby is also a fantastic preacher, which we're about to hear from. Gabby also um, is the author with her husband of the book Psalms for Black Lives, Reflections for the Work of Liberation. I have this book, I use this book, um, it's a wonderful resource, so if you're looking to dive further into the Psalms and use them for prayer or for personal study, I also highly recommend it. Gabby comes to us having lived a lot of rich life, 
Uh, she comes from Dallas, Texas, uh, but has lived in New York for quite some time. Uh, has spent time studying at Hampton University, uh, getting a Master of Arts from NYU, uh, MDiv from Yale, and a doctorate from Duke University. So she's seen her way around the academic halls um, and has found a way to find life and inspiration and to bring that into her ministry in her life as a pastor, but also as she speaks all around the country. Um, Gabby is creative and loving, and we are in for a treat. So thank you, Gabby. We know that you are very welcome in this place, and we are glad to have you. Good morning. Good morning. Now, y'all, I come from a talk-back environment, so I'm going to try that again. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Oh, that sounds good. You see why it is wonderful to be with you on this first Sunday in Advent. Um, what an honor, what a joy. Uh, this is one of my favorite seasons. Um, I have to express gratitude to both Jenny and Ian. Thank you for this warm welcome. Uh, Jenny and I were classmates, uh, and Ian was one of my supervisors uh, at one of my many fellowships. <laughs> I kept busy while I was a student here, but one of them, um, I was a uh, interfaith fellow for the McDougal Graduate Center. And as a part of that fellowship, I had the honor of sitting on the uh, spiritual round table board. I know I'm getting that wrong. Uh, where all of the folks who lead varying um, religious initiatives at Yale uh, meet monthly. And I got to learn from Ian. Um, and I also got to learn um, from Sharon, who has now retired, uh, but who took me under her wing. And so it is just a joy to be back here. Um, I also come into Battelle and I instantly go back to my commencement weekend. Uh, because as you all probably know, the house does what we call black graduation uh, in Battelle. Um, it's always the Friday before commencement. And um, I had the honor of being the flag bearer. Uh, and so I came in with my flag. And it was raining then too. I don't know what it is about me, Battelle, and rain. Um, but as I walked back onto campus, just so many memories flood me. So thank you. Uh, for having me. I brought two members of my church with me. Y'all just wave at me, Crystal and Charmaine. Uh, and so we're excited to be here with you. Um, and we're excited to get into the word together today. I know that the message, thank you. I know that the message of uh, the, the scripture for today has already been read, but please permit me to read it one more time. Uh, before we do that, let us pray. Oh Lord, we are grateful for the opportunity to gather in hope. We ask, oh God, that our hope would be deepened because we gather together this morning. Hear our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Isaiah 9, 6 through 7 is already been read in the hearing, but I would like to read it once more as it is the scripture that I have preached from this morning. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and government will be upon his shoulders. And he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace. There will be no end. My sermon topic for this morning is we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones we've been waiting for. You see why I love the Advent season. Um, just up the hill at the Divinity School, we had a recurring tradition of an Advent party. Uh, we'd have an Advent service and a party after that. And it was always so beautiful. It always set the tone. Somehow in the middle of finals approaching, and stress looming, we could sneak into Marquand Chapel and have a service that filled the brims. If you got there late, you couldn't get seen. And then go to the common room and have a DJ and have food and have beverages and have fellowship and to bring in the season of Advent. Advent is about hopefulness. Advent is about something I still believe is possible is actually on the way. And I love the season of Advent because it reminds us every year 
that there were folks who were still believing that the Messiah was coming. And y'all, I think it's so critical for our faith to remember that the hope that has been promised to us is still on the way. Uh, my, my happiness and my joy that comes from this word hope is connected to the fact that whenever you hope for something, you're giving yourself permission to believe. And life sometimes tries to snatch our capacity for belief. We are sitting in an Ivy League institution which values reason more than faith and more than belief. We're sitting in an environment where often we have to make our case and, and prove our points and have scientific data and have peer-reviewed journals and, and have the kinds of conditions that beyond a shadow of a doubt can prove that what we believe is worthy of believing in. But I love the season of Advent because in Advent, we get to hope just because it's time to hope. Somebody you snuck into Mattel Chapel this morning and I want to let you know it is time to hope. And you don't have to explain to me why you feel the hope you feel. Just know you're in the right liturgical season. Looking at our text, I thought it important uh, to share a bit of uh, uh, the, the, the elements of the scripture that I think might pass us if we don't slow down. For unto us the child is born, for unto us the son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. He will be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. That's verse number six. Well, uh, you may not know this unless you also have been through divinity school, but, but, but in Isaiah uh, chapter nine, verse six, uh, those verbs in that verse that I just read, uh, they are verbs that are understood as perfect and consecutive imperfects. Okay. Uh, verbs that I just read, uh, 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 he shall be called, he shall be called the counsel. The, those are, are what, what, we, what we know as perfect and consecutive imperfect, which is the normal tense of Hebrew. Now I can take Hebrew at Yale because I didn't have to, I, that wasn't my focus. I'm practically the alone, so let's just say that. Uh, but I had to know enough to be able to get my exegesis. I had to know enough context to be able to, to interpret the, the scriptures appropriately. And so the normal narrative text is past tense when we're talking about verbs in Hebrew. Why does this matter? It matters because when you read verse 6, understanding that the verbs used in Hebrew are past tense, it's not just saying that for unto us the child will be born. It's saying, for unto us a child has been born. For unto us not a son will be given, but for unto us a son has been given. And the government not will be, the government is on his shoulders. And not he will be called, but he is called wonderful counselor. Uh, not he will be called mighty God, but he is already mighty God. He is already Prince of Peace. And then in verse 7, the, 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 the tense is changed to future tense. I, I, I really enjoy this dimension of preparation for the word because verse 7 then changes to future tense of the greatness of his government and peace. There will be no end. That it doesn't end now and it won't end later. It's in perpetuity. It's going to keep going. And, and we have to understand uh, that, that this passage uh, is so powerful because it's written in a time period uh, uh, where those who are hearing it are under oppression. Uh, they are under uh, uh, Judah lived most of that time period under the threat of Assyrian domination. This word of hope is not to folks who got everything figured out. Can I make it plain? This word of hope is not to folks who already know the Prince of Peace is here. This word of hope is actually, I like it, one commentary calls it a birth announcement. 
Y'all know when you start to announce that, that, that you're going to have a child. Uh, uh, one commentator uh, uh, puts it like this, that, that Isaiah 9, verses 6 through 7 is a birth announcement of hope. It is the first declaration of the Prince of Peace. I'm sorry, I'm a little bad because every now and then I'll be excited about the word. Uh, it, it, it is the first declaration that, that the thing we're waiting for, we've actually always had, but now it's coming in the type of form that we can feel it and touch it. And when it comes, it will never leave us. And so I stop by you see why to let you know that, that, that we are the ones we've been waiting for because do you know that you are already a person of peace? We are in tumultuous times in our nation. This is not my pulpit, so I will not decree my perspective on the current matter. But I think we can all agree we're in tumultuous times. And I think we can also all agree that we need some peace. And I think we can even agree that we need some conditions that promote hope and belief, even when it seems like there's no reason. But I stop by you see why to let you know that for unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of that greatness, there is no end. Stop by to let us know that we are the ones we've been waiting for because we are the ones intimately connected to the Prince of Peace. We are the ones that when everyone is looking for some hope, we recognize and remember there's some hope available to us. We are the ones that recognize that that thing was written in past tense, though it looks like it's coming, but it's already here. It's already here. Why are you trying to figure it out? God has already worked it out. That's what we say in my tradition. We, we can get excited about our hope and our belief because we recognize that the things we're praying for already exist within us. Hey, brother, <laughs> the president of your place in the very same support me. Hey, how you doing? We, we literally, y'all, if we take ourselves to be Christian, and, and I checked before I came in here, and they told me this is the Protestant chapter service. So we do a whole lot of interfaith work, which is important at Yale, but I was told this is the Christian service. I got to help you can tell chapter. And, and so if you walk around calling yourself a Christian, then you ought to walk around who is not coming, but who is actually already here. And so we are the ones we have been waiting for when tumultuous times occur, because we are the ones acquainted with peace. Peace is not passive. Peace has action. But we are the ones acquainted with the wonderful counselor who's already here. We are the ones acquainted with the mighty God who's already shown God's self mighty and shown God's self strong. Anybody got a testimony? Just wave at me. God, there's something for you this week. Okay, I like it when people start to testify. We are the ones already acquainted with the everlasting Father that, that from beginning to end, that, that there is no end in perpetuity. We, we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We are the ones already acquainted with the Prince of Peace. Your job, 
Keep that belief going. And, and even when you don't have all of the resource answers you want to have for that debate that is waiting you, uh, when you go down to have your meal at brunch or what have you, even when you may feel ill-equipped to interpret all the times, even when your news feed is bombarding you with more headlines and more data that you have not had time to sit with, I tell you this, while you're trying to discern the times, while you're going to your mentors and your loved ones, while you're talking to your friends who are directly impacted, while you're trying to be an ally, while you're trying to do all the right things, you can still usher in some peace. You may not understand every element of the story, but you can bring in some hope. <laughs> you, you, you may not be able to really figure it all out right then and there, but, but you can still bring in some belief. It won't always be like this. We are the ones we've been waiting for because all of us are waiting for some people of kindness. All of us are waiting for some people willing to, to settle out heated disputes. All of us are waiting for individuals whose love transcends their understanding of all the politics and all, all the arguing and all the fighting and all the frustrations and all, all the marginalization. Then everybody's waiting for someone to love them and bring them some hope. I would offer you that, that there's no one that will turn down love and turn down hope. Nobody that will turn down peace. And so we are ones who we've been waiting for. Because while you're discerning the times, if you keep the peace, you can think clearly to discern better. Yeah, while, while you're discerning the times, if you can usher in some hope, uh, we're a community organizer, you can, you can keep the hope up, uh, then you can keep going back to the drawing board and, and being able to try another approach because the last one didn't work. But, but if we are the ones we've been waiting for, we are the hope us who say, y'all, it didn't work that time, but that means I'm over forever. Because the only thing that is forever is the government of peace, of which there will be no end. My encouragement for you today, my hope for us today, is that we will be people of hope, that we will be people of love, and that we will recognize the thing we think we need, we already have.
God of infinite grace, as we gather in this place marking the beginning of a new liturgical year, we give thanks. We give thanks for all the places from whence we have come. We give thanks for all the situations you have brought us through. We give thanks for community, the ones that sent us here and the ones that have gathered. You have been with us every step of the way. As we cling to the expectant hope of the coming Messiah, we acknowledge that prominence of that hope is not wholly evident for everyone. All that is wrong is not a figment of our imaginations. Oh God, you know that this is the season when the heresy that we can buy worthiness and approval with good grades and thoughtful gifts is the most rampant. This is the season when we may be tempted to cover our racism and violence and bigotry and greed with tinsel and lights and then say, but Jesus is the reason for the season. Do not let the present darkness lull us to sleep. Shake us awake, Lord. Help us be better. Give us the courage to sit and wait in the mystery of Advent with our heads looking up for a star. In this time of sitting and waiting, give us the audacity to tell the stories of our prophets in the wilderness, angels appearing, a peasant girl singing, my heart to magnify the Lord, and wise men who kind of forget to follow Herod's orders. Open our hearts to these lessons of these stories of your love your hope. Oh God, when we get tired and waiting, when it all seems too much, pour out your spirit on us so that we can see this unfathomable truth. Death and darkness do not get the last word. No, the last word comes from a God who, while lying in a manger, cried for his mother. The last word comes from a God while hanging from a cross, cried to his mother, woman, behold your son. The last word comes from God, whose spirit came, bore it all, endures it all, and will remain forever and ever. Come, Emmanuel, come. Fill us with your hope. Amen. We're blessed here at UCY to be able to give our offering to neighboring organizations in New Haven that are endeavoring to help others. During Advent, our offering will be directed to the Connecticut Food Bank. We ask that you give cheerfully, exercising our faith in giving as God has given to us. The offering will now be received.
This is a table where Christ meets us as Christ's self. Christ nourishes us and fills us with that sense of hope and peace that Reverend Dr. Gabby spoke of. That hope and peace that the choir fills us with when we are moved by music. That hope and peace we see in the flames that continue to burn around us. So bring yourself here to this table. If you are seeking hope, if you are longing for peace, if you have it and you want to give thanks for it, come to this table as you are, for it is Christ who invites you to be known and fed in this place. After our prayers and songs, you'll be invited to come up each of these three aisles, and the server will offer you a piece of bread and a small cup of grape juice. If you wish to receive, come forward and simply hold out your hands. Gluten, actually, all of communion today is gluten-free, because uh, Tani made us delicious at gluten-free communion. So uh, you can accept um, gluten-free communion at all of the stations. For those that are joining us online, you'll be invited to eat and drink at the end of our prayers, if you wish. And if you do not want to receive communion, but you want to receive a blessing, simply come forward and put your hands on your chest or do not hold out your hands and the server will offer you a blessing. And now let us join together in the great thanksgiving. May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Holy God, creator of heaven and earth, with joy we praise you and give thanks to your name. You commanded light to shine out of darkness divided the sea and dry land, created the vast universe, and called it good. You made us in your image to live with one another in love. You gave us the breath of life and the freedom to choose. You promised yourself in covenant with Abraham and Sarah, told us your purpose and the commandments through Moses, and called for justice in the cry of the prophets. Through long generations, you have been faithful. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with those through the, ages, through the ages who have waited for your coming. Let us sing. Whenever you drink of it, do this also in remembrance of me. Together, we dwell in deep wonder and awe at the life and teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, together, let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. We seek you, O Christ. We long for you and for all to be made well. In this meal, come to us now and nourish us as we wait and work for all that you have left to do. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And let us respond in singing. <laughs> Thank you. 
kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we do not temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. gifts of God for the people of God. I now invite those who wish to receive on, uh, on YouTube to bring forward your elements. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. I now invite the servers to come forward. ready. Fill us with your deep sense of wonder, 
and embolden us to keep us awake to all the of our healing. Amen. Amen. Now let us now join together for our closing hymn, Keep Your Lamps Trimmed and Burning. Go in peace.